Hi, I'm Andy Smith. I'm uh, really pleased to be in front of uh, such a, a growing bunch of uh, people. Uh, the room grew a lot while, while uh, Julia was talking, and, uh, and I'm, I'm glad that, that uh, he endured that and not me, because he does better at that than I do. Um, it's, uh, my, my role, is, as Julia suggested, I don't know which position I was in with respect to the, uh, the uh, Brady's, but I think he was Peter. I might have been the father, and I'm not sure I like that. But um, in any case, uh, my role today is to work on connecting the, the, um, the methodology and the framework called, that we call the dragonfly effect to, uh, the, in the class to the concept of, uh, of being viral. So underlying in the, uh, the dragonfly effect, which for those of you who aren't in the post class, we'll find some way to catch you up on it, um, are two underlying uh, academic constructs. The first is the ripple effect, the idea that small actions have big effects over time, and so that uh, you can take uh, a simple action and have it have unintended consequences, whether it's um, by magnitude or simply um, affect people two or three steps uh, beyond you in a way that, that you couldn't have anticipated. The second is the concept of emotional contagion. You know, if you're happy, your friends are happy. If you're sad, your friends are sad. And the way you can help transmit these emotions can help you advance your cause. So for those of you who aren't entomologists, a dragonfly has four wings. And that's about all you need to know about dragonflies. So in our framework, however, which also conveniently has four wings, the first element is focus. So that's, think about zooming in. Focusing is about making your action and making your goal small and singular, having an action plan that's concrete, and really being true to both your cause and yourself, and setting, most importantly, milestones and metrics. For those of you in the class who saw Avinash's presentation, you can think about the example he used with the Obama campaign. None of what, nobody in that campaign would have selected the particular image or the particular call to action that they ultimately did, but through the use of analytics, they chose the right one that was most impactful, and the result was, well, what the result was. The next wing is about grabbing attention. Think of this as making you look, stopping traffic. If you are in a crosswalk and somebody's coming at you, you're probably paying attention to what's big, what's fast moving, and maybe brightly colored. Uh, that is, that's what grabbing attention is about. What are you going to do to grab attention? How are you going to get that micro slice of someone's attention so that they stop whatever it is they're currently doing and look at you? The next step is about engagement. Once you've got someone's attention, you need to take them over the hook. You might have just attracted them somehow with, you know, um, hit the monkey with a hammer kind of banner, but you're not going to hold their attention for very long unless you make them care about what you're doing. So. This is most um, effectively accomplished through good storytelling. Figuring out what engages people, what makes them care, is what, you, what your ultimate goal is here. You can do it through a variety of ways, whether it's by using images and stories, telling good, st telling good, um, telling good stories, and mixing up the media that you use to do it. Ultimately, taking action. Taking action is where you get people to pick up your cause, and do it for you on your behalf. This is about campaigning. This is about um, making some of the things self-propagate. And this is where the connection to virality begins. So, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. So, as we move through the framework, you look at, you start by focusing. Next, you grab attention. You engage people to make them care. And then, if you get people to care enough, they start taking action. Next slide, please. With virality, you get that, that cycle to repeat itself. You get people to come back through taking action and go forward and help you grab attention and engage and begin it again. So now we've defined a little bit of, of the dragonfly effect, and there's more of that available for those of you who wish to who pursue it. But let's think at the top level about virality. As uh, Julio already adequately presented, it's about spreading. But more than spreading, it's about spreading and growing. Um, and the growth of a viral activity has to be both self-sustaining and, and continue. So the new infections come from each new generation proceeding. If you look at the actual viral math, because what's a, what's a discussion like this without some math, um, compared to conven conventional marketing, the moment you turn off the spigot of conventional marketing, whether it's advertising or uh, direct mail, things stop happening. But with viral marketing, the reproduction rate 
is about is about this factor that <clears throat> when it's greater than one, it's the result of of uh, people transmitting. Think of it as sneezing. The likelihood of the person sitting next to you right now coughing, transmitting to you their disease, is the reproduction rate. And the number of people they sit next to um, indicates uh, by that product how much the reproduction rate will be. So when we think about viral activities in the, con in the context of the dragonfly, we look at your grab attention rate, your engagement rate, and the fit and ease with which you make it fun to take action all, all affect the ability to which you make something go viral. As you look at each of these activities within the context of the class and your product and your project, um, that's how you can make it work. So without much more uh, discussion, I want to hand it over to Matt, who's going to lead the, the left-brained session. Is that right? All right.